remember when Mick Hucknell trained with us? That's right. <laughs> <laughs> I just remember the night before the battle. You struggle against him. <laughs> <laughs> Someone get to Mick. <laughs> well, Stevie lifted the trophy. I'm not on any picture. I'm at the back, stretching my car. And you see, like, players have only played Jesus, two games. Jamie. Like, right. the thing is, Jake, he's doing all that, but, like, the ball's not even there yet. So even when they're walking over, I can go like that. And he... <laughs> I've just come up with a TV concept. The four of us are going to go in. A manager club. You can. Who's what role? Who's the manager? Who's yeah, what? yeah, yeah. Let's get that right. That's my role. <laughs> <laughs> These <No>. roles. <laughs> oh, the sweets are out. The mini rolls, brilliant. Yeah. Probably gonna have three today. I'm gonna have. I'm gonna have one. <laughs> You're only gonna have one. This is the one. Oh, this is the one. What are we doing now? We're talking about something about the European. I like that quiz. What was the European one we did? The European this Cup winners. What was that one? I remember it was like Red Star, yeah, Belgrade. Oh, oh Stoy Bucharest and all of that one. I thought Monaco, for some, I just saw no. the red and white cat. I thought it was Monaco. It weren't Monaco. Even Porto beat him. Yeah. Marino's. That's it, Marino's Porto. I played in that game where he slid down the shot slide. There's a great slide, wasn't it? Were you still great knee slide. behind them? That's that was a good Howard. Slide. That was Phil. Phil gave away a silly free kick and Tim parried it. I know it's a team game, but. <laughs> well, I was, you got sent I was off suspended. I was suspended for that. You think about the, the ones that you missed a lot, don't you? I mean, I'm, I'm a, yeah. yeah. <clears throat> you can't help it, can you? Oh. Well, you're cutting into the show, eh? Because the first question is what your best and worst times in Europe. Oh, wow. We're, we're talking about them now, aren't we? So let's just let's ca crack on with it while we're getting this done. I'm sorting out my dates for some holidays as yes, well. Yes, please. <laughs> <laughs> the mini retirement game. Yeah, I need to relax. I like your cool, the like, cool ones. Like it's really like cool, eh? Take my hat off, cheers. Well done. It's nice, eh? Well yes. So, yeah. You just like I was skiing the other night. It was like. Yeah. I mean, yeah. It's not a big deal. Yeah. It's really cool. Thank you. Are they raspberry? Thank you very much. Sorry, I don't understand. Sorry, I don't understand. <laughs> Sorry, I don't Sorry. understand him. I don't, I don't understand, understand him for 25 years, yeah. Siri. <laughs> These are amazing, aren't they? They're nice. Jesus yeah, Christ, they're, they're off so down. good. I need to cut back. Love you. On my chocolate intake. We had a lot of bad ones. We were in the Champions League every single season, and I'm going to run through them all now with you. Ah, yeah, Gary. Wow. Ah, yeah. Yeah. Oh. Gothenburg. Ah, you'll come back. That's the idiots, surely. Galatas. One sec, Gary. <laughs> proper intro. We've done a proper intro for the last four months. Yeah. <laughs> right. Right, here we go. Right. Welcome to Stick to Football, brought to you by Skybet. And this week, we're going to hand the show over to you. It's your community questions, and I'm joined by Roy, Ian and Cara. And the first are related to the Champions League, because it's nearly back with us. What are your best and worst moments playing in Europe with your club? Oh, the worst. We had a lot oh. of bad ones. Oh, I'm not, I'm not going to enjoy Let this chat. It's, I don't like looking back. Do you remember that, that journey? Barcelona in the new camp. Did you play? Well, I was out there. 4 0. Yeah. Got them, but but got, again, Gary, let's get. Them, remember, but, put, put on about the Champions League. For, going back to the time when we were involved, you had to win the league. Mm. And then when we were in it, the first, it was knockout. And we couldn't play our strongest team because of the European rule. Do you remember? Those players oh, had yeah. to be left out, isn't that? I was benefiting from it. Mm. I was on the bench or playing. Yeah. So that came in Barcelona. There was a few lads missing one day. There was a few. Didn't put Schmeichel in goal, did he? Is that right? Was it? Yeah. yeah. He, yeah. he wanted. His, I think Ferguson said he wanted his best sort of ten players on right. the pitch, so he was the one who was sacrificed. You can play your fair. strongest team, but again, if you're just talking about that game, obviously um, Barcelona are brilliant. To be fair, Stoichkov. Oh my! I've never seen anything like Romario. Yeah. Romario and Stoichkov. Oh my god! A few times, there's a few teams I've played against, and generally it was either Barcelona or Real Madrid. No other team has done it to me where you doubt that yeah. you're, uh, you're good, good you are. enough. Yeah. Yeah. You've entered us a little bit in the no, early days. No, 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 I never had it with the Italian teams because they, that, that was kind of a physical challenge. But yeah. with the Spanish teams, even the so-called Leicester Spanish, technically they'd keep the ball and you were like chasing, you're like, like, particularly Barca and Real. When they were in the zone and they had the top mm. players, you were like all the best getting the ball back. They were That night, Barcelona, <coughs> I'm going to say I touched the ball four times and that was in the warm-up. <laughs> we just couldn't, mm. oh, we mm. couldn't get near them, could we? No. It was four and we were delighted it was four. Well, I, what's, what, what was I, as was at the time it was it was the, the cup winners cup for me when we was playing, and uh, who was it? I think um, we ended up obviously we ended up winning it, but I remember Palmer, uh, um, Paris Saint Germain. Uh, yeah, yeah. Did you um, get suspended in the semi final? Yeah, yeah. That was, the, that was what I was going to say. That's my worst. Lot, that was my worst. You suspended a lot, weren't you? <laughs> what you said, what is, why did you, you go in there, girl? I wasn't I wasn't suspended a lot. I think you were. Yeah, to be honest, I was suspended a lot. <laughs> but like, I remember that game because obviously I got I got um, second booking in the, the Paris Saint Germain, 
But they were they were so good because they had Who's uh, for them then, then? Zanola, George Ware up front, Valdo. And even with um, Palmer, when we, beat, when we beat Palmer, I think it was an underrated um, Arsenal yeah. victory, that one, because I think when Palm, that year when we beat, we beat Palmer, Palmer beat Ajax in the semi-final. And obviously Ajax went and won the Champions League the next year, beating AC Milan. Um, it was like so tough. That's where I think the 1-0 to the Arsenal came from. That was... Well, it wasn't football again, but when you were like, <clears throat> Arsenal was a strong English team, it was when you started going, and you still didn't know too much about you know, Barcelona, yeah. Remember, you're still going into the unknown, Parma, you're still going, we're the best team in England, or we're, man, you know, we're a good team, and then all of a sudden you play against these teams. I think when you play the, 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 the Bayern Munichs, the Real Madrid's, the Milan's, and all these teams, I would argue, honestly, at times I've had tougher games in the early rounds of the UEFA Cup, because when you play them teams, everyone's up for it, the crowd's up yeah. for it, you know who the players are, you've got to, you might have played against them international level. I remember the early rounds of the UEFA Cup. I remember we won the UEFA Cup in 2001. The first game we played was against a team called Stour Bucharest. Mm. Oh, my God. <laughs> they were all that bit. Everyone was quick <laughs> and shy. You're, like, you're supposed to beat them 3 or 4 nil, And you're like, honestly, yeah. I, think, I think we won 1-0 at home and drew away 0-0. Nil, and it was the first round. And I always say the early rounds of the UEFA Cup are so tough because of... You go into sort of that Eastern block, it's just, and, and the crowd's not as up for it. You think you should win easy. We, we, we had tougher games. We've got a, tra a running track around the Yeah, field. it's just <laughs> the footlights I mean, aren't played, working, um, you know what I mean? You're like, I remember oh. in the cup, was, we, played, we played against um, Auxerre at France, and they had a player in midfield called Quarantine Martins. I've never seen anyone as good as that. I, I couldn't understand how he wasn't at mm. somewhere else. Martin Keown was doing a man, man market job with him. It was like, it was, it was, it was, That's he was why he toying so with good. him. That's why he looks it so was, good. He was toying with him. Yeah. It was like <laughs> Geppetto and Pinocchio. It was, he was toying with him. You're yeah. just watching him and you think to yourself, this guy is yeah. unbelievable. You know, and I remember when we played, we had to play, um, we played um, AC Milan when they had the, the team, that same team. Because remember they were, was it 94, when they hammered Barcelona. Yeah. That was the, our great day where we played that team with Desai, Boban. Um, who was manager? It wasn't Capella. It was Capella manager mm, of that team? That, yeah, yeah. What do you mean? I can't remember who the manager was, but it was it was um, Massaro was up front, um, Baresi at the yeah, back yeah. with Maldini, and that. But you know who it was? Well, you know, like you say, you see. Yeah, players, but you must have scored, right? You must no. No, they disallowed it. Right. I got disallowed. I was devastated. But like you know, when you say you play against. Um, teams and you think, wow, they, yeah. they, they're born to do it. Boban was yeah. unbelievable. Oh. oh yeah, fuck it out. It was Maybe. just like you're, you're almost like no one could get near. He was, he was quick. He was one touch. He was, he was running off. The, it was like this is unbelievable. It's, it's funny, you know, because you, you say you're playing them games and you think, you know, we've all played those games where you think you're out your depth, don't you? You, you, you sit back in the dressing room and think, wow, I actually had mo more of them in the Premier League than in, in Europe because I think if I think of us with Europe. We were actually quite successful in Europe. And when we were going for the Champions League, the four best teams, or let's say the top six teams in the Champions League, were always the top four from England, plus AC Milan and Barcelona. Real Madrid were having a bit of a stick. So we didn't, we didn't really have that in Europe in sort of my time with Julia. Listen, you lost games, don't get me wrong. But that, that feeling of sort of thinking, wow, you know, sometimes I play against the Arsenal team under Wenger, you'd be like, what? Or you go to Old Trafford and get beat 3-0, and you'd be like, what just that? whoa. That, you just never felt like you were in the game or you could, you could get near to anyone. I didn't quite have that in Europe. Because Europe for Liverpool, is just, it's just like, you feel that's, yeah. that's what it is. That, that's what Liverpool's about, European football. And we've always done quite well in it. And the journeys back after being beaten in Europe. Oh. Was a torture, aren't you? Mm. Just going to the airport. I know. You know the one, so the other one you get back to the airport at 2 3 in the morning, <laughs> you, you forget which level you've parked your car on. <laughs> <laughs> and you're walking around the car park, oh. pressing your button up in the lights flash. <laughs> it's like, honestly, yeah. the amount of times that happened to me. I, and even now, I take a picture of the floor that I'm on if I go away and park my car. The amount of times you. So, what was the bad ones for United? Because I, oh, I, what I would one, say one. about United, obviously, the, the domination that you had in the, prem, in the Premier League. But then I think of what other teams did in that era, sort of like a Milan, mm. Real Madrid lately, uh, going back sort of Liverpool, you think of Ajax. Man United never had that domination in Europe. Mm. 
that I think you probably should have, considering how dominant know. you were. Yeah. You know what I'm saying is you won two Champions League, but they were so far apart from mm. each other. It wasn't like an era of... Oh, we we definitely, two three, Jamie, we definitely, like, if you look back and we start breaking, we definitely left a few games go by, but that yeah, isn't yeah. that football anyway. We uh, can all sit here and go, this game slipped by Dortmund, Porto. by Porto. Dortmund, Porto, Leverkusen. Leverkusen. Uh, Leverkusen. Listen, I'll be, I'll be Monaco. Sorry. No, no, you can't win them all. This, yeah. What I'm saying is, though, I, I, honestly, the Dortmund yeah, one. teams United should win. The, the, the Dortmund one, I always remember the Dortmund one because I think Eric retired, didn't he? Yeah, that summer, yeah. I think there's almost, well, a few, I think it was like a week or so late, it felt like. Yeah, it was, but that's, and, yeah, it's good, towards the end of the season. Yeah, obviously. and it was yeah. like, it just felt like a yeah. big downer. Like a, oh. And the problem was, there were times mm. where we would get knocked out of the Champions League quite a lot, quarter semis, mm. and it would actually dampen the league success a little bit because you still were carrying over from sort of like the, the oh, yeah. loss in the Champions League. I mean, the Monaco one when Trezeguet, I can still now feel the silence when Trezeguet scored for Monaco. He sh shot from like 30 yards. Yeah. Unbelievable goal. And just the worst feeling I think in football at Old Trafford I ever had was when a, a European team scored. Yeah. Because it was eerie. Yeah. Mm. It's not real, is it? It's not, yeah. it's like surreal. It's like, because you knew an away goal counted double and you were done. What was it like? Do you know what I mean? That yeah. feeling, it's like, oh. Never accusing in Porto for me. The Leverkusen game is the one that's still... That's the one I sit I broke my foot in the first game of that. And after 20 minutes. Is there Roberto was playing against me? The, the, the Leverkusen one, I would probably say, we, right up there, because we'd won the UEFA Cup the year before. We're in the Champions League for the first time. We're playing Leverkusen, obviously a good team. What, what, Ballock, what round were you playing him in? We played him in the quarters oh. before. You, was but, that the Ballack side? <laughs> yeah, yeah Ramelo yeah. was playing, mm, uh, Schneider. Zeroberto. Zeroberto. Lucio was at the back. Yeah. But... It was still a team that you think you can win. And yeah. we won 1-0 at home. And at that time, we weren't amazing attacking-wise, but we always had this feeling that, because we'd done it the year before, we could go anywhere and get a clean sheet. Mm. We're just, we're going to boom. Yeah. What? We've got no away goal against us. We go there, we go 1-0 down and then score to make it 1-1. You're thinking, we're OK. End up losing the game 4-2 and going out. But it was when, I think it still happens now, we knew we would be playing you or whoever you were playing in the quarter. And don't get me wrong, you were a better team than us. You were winning the league. But it was that spell, if you remember, with Gerard Hurley. I think we beat you four or five times in a row. So even though you were going for the league, it was still like, we've sort of got United's number here. Yeah. And yeah, we didn't, I, want you, we didn't want you that. Yeah. Yeah. Did, we, did, we beat, did we beat Deportivo in the quarter? Yeah. Maybe. But I remember they, they, they them went. beating you in the... You played them in the group, because I remember that Deportivo. They were decent. Oh, good to see them. them. Yeah. Oh, my God. They were, they were, Valeron. They were, they were, they were, oh. Yeah, he was oh. France. Yeah. yeah. I was playing against France. Fran was about 50. Yeah. Fran was 56. <laughs> right. Okay. He was a bit heavy in his belly. He was like the same shape as you, wasn't he? <laughs> no, he was. He was, he was like, yeah. short. And... I couldn't get near him. It's like, he was the first player I played against properly. I mean, Del Pierre was a little bit like, do you know when you're a right back and you're playing here, but then the player goes and plays in the hole there, the uh, pocket, you and you think, do, do I go in there? Because the left back's going yeah. round. And he's like, oh, yeah, it was horrible. There's a couple that stick in my mind, and I'm going to say this very, because for, for legal reasons, I think there were a few teams that we played against that weren't clean. I thought we thought it at the time. What were they? Were two, what were they two pumped up? They were two pumped. Must be the Italian teams. Honestly, the, I, I remember yeah. the mean gigs in the mid 2000s. The, what, what, around what, what, the, the only thing I remember, I just, we, I just, you just, you just we were fit. Teams. We were fit. When we played thought. certain teams, I would be walking off and I'd be, you're, you're absolutely shattered. Mm. And I, again, I remember it. And I'd be looking at players I played against, a couple of Italian teams. You're what? And they look like they've not even yeah. played a match. Yeah, yeah. That, yeah. honestly, I, I genuinely, and I look back now and I think if the sort of, the stuff that. But why can't we talk about that? Are we not? Well, you, you, I, I don't know. I mean, you can't accuse people of. But what I'm saying to you is. Just have. <laughs> <laughs> no, we're but, not naming names or no, clubs. We're not naming clubs. No, but my point is, I think that when you look back, when you look back now, what came out after in cycling yeah, yeah, and other yeah, sports yeah. and doctors, and then you think. And, and we thought we thought at the time there were things that like that. I'm sorry, that's physically, we, yeah. we we were fit. We we weren't drinkers. We were fit. We were. So, that's not right. Mm. There's something not right. I came off a pitch against an Italian team once. Thought that's not right. That's not right. I'm sorry. And I know that a couple of the other lads, mid 2000s, thought exactly the same thing. And I, that, that to me is something that sort of. Yeah. No, no there's well, no excuses. Okay, Italian video, clubs yeah. were investigated for all that. I think there was a coach over there called uh, Z Zeman. Yeah. Remember, he, he managed. Beep. Sort of no, 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 no. He, he was talking about documented. He, this is documented. He, he, yeah. People know about this. No, no, no. He, he was, he was talking about. He said, said it. it. <laughs> no, he said it. Yeah. He accused clubs over there, and it was like a big investigation. He was saying in in Italian yeah. football, yeah, he named right. two or three clubs who was saying what's going on behind the scenes here isn't right, and 
Yeah, it wasn't right. And I just think that, that, that to, be, to be fair, that, those moments I think were bad. But that we had some... Were we naive? I just, I look back now and I think of sometimes of the, the way in which we approach games because we were just attack work. We would literally go for yeah, it. And the, yeah, you think about sometimes if we, you know, when, I wonder whether like we, we all come together. I wonder if you know, the manager thinks it. Like you look back at say those games is Dortmund, Monaco, Leverkusen. Yeah, we never uh, changed our shape, our, our mindset really. It was about. He changed a little bit, didn't he, in 2001 too when he, went, when he brought Rude up front and put yeah. Scholesy there and, and you and Veron a bit deeper or whatever. That, that was a change where he said, right, we need to get three in midfield in Europe. Yeah. The sign of Veron was to get that three in midfield to become more compact. But, but you, you say that, listen, you know better than me, but yeah. I, I actually think the late 90s, I remember it was a big thing that it was like Cantona doesn't do it in Europe. Mm. And he used to play Cantona yeah. up front on his own a lot. I yeah, remember, yeah, they did, they and he, did, so he was going yeah. three in midfield, I think, probably late 90s. I remember at the time, it was like Cantona, oh, he's not a centre, there was none of that false nine stuff, yeah. and it was like, you're either a centre forward or, you know, and it was like Cantona's not a centre forward, and out now, striker. Yeah. I, I remember that late 90s. Do, you, tried do that. you know what I think about Eric, and it's something, to be fair, I don't speak about Eric a lot, but when I think, I was, we were, were so young then, we were 20, 21 when Eric was there, but I, when I think the pressure and the responsibility and accountability he would take if we didn't win in Europe, I felt like he was he would carry that pressure. Do you feel that? Like I felt that he literally it, it was abnormal because he'd won the in that season when he came back and he scored all those goals yeah. to win us the league. He almost felt like he had to do that. I think in Europe. Yeah, but that's and, good. But well, that's what you. Yeah, I'm saying to you, it's unbelievable, really. Yeah. The way in which he assumed that like, sort of like. I, I, always, I always think that because he's such a legend for United, and then after he went, United went on to win you know, Champions League and then later on with Rooney and Ronaldo. But he had that situation where he, he obviously fell out with, I think it was Gerard Hulier, so he, he never really had that, he never got the World Cup either, did he, yes. in no. terms of yeah, yeah. what France did in 19. Mm. Do you think he, always, even though he's such a legend, do you think there's something where he, he didn't quite do it? Oh, international level, he, he got banned from playing by the, mm. by the manager, but actually taking Manchester United to a European Cup. Do you think that's something, think that's as you what, say, that he really felt that? But he said at the time after he retired, after the Dortmund game, that was that was why he retired. He felt as though he couldn't, the couldn't disappointment, the pre he, he, that was it. He'd had enough, hadn't he? He was, just, he was an emotional guy like yeah. that, but that's what made mm. him a great lad. Uh, but I, I, I wouldn't look at Eric's career and look and say he missed out on that. Every player will have a, we did all analyse our careers and go, we missed mm. out on this and I missed mm. out on yeah. that. I think what Eric did done in terms of lifting United from from where they were and getting them over the line in terms of winning the Premier League, and obviously at the time you had to win the league to compete in Europe. You know, I I wouldn't kind of that, that doesn't tarnish. But he, but he, he put pressure on himself for but that. That's didn't what he? great players do yeah. and great characters do, and that's why Eric was loved. I think yeah. he enjoyed that collar up, give me the ball mm -hmm. and play for Man yeah. United, and it didn't quite work out in Europe. I agree, but I think at the time the challenges for United at the time was we couldn't, honestly, you couldn't play your best team. It was a knockout straight away. Mm. There's definitely more opportunities, I think, for teams and players now to win the Champions League. I'm not saying it's easier, far from it, but you got, at the time, again, again, you had to win the league and you couldn't play your strongest team. So all I, I think Eric would have probably had a few hang-ups about that. Of course, like I saw, the stuff we look back on, but it, it wouldn't take away from what I felt what he'd done at Man United, and that was, he did lift the club mm. and get him over the line, first and foremost, in terms of winning league titles, and uh, that's why I think United fans, obviously, Loved him to bits, and I love the fact he was emotional, and, and he did, he did carry a lot of that. What what, what age was when he left United? Was he thirty two? Early thirties, yeah. Was he? Yeah, uh, and he. But I think Eric was fed up with one or two other things as well. I think off the pitch, and I think there was definitely issues with his contract, whatever. But yeah, he, I think, makes him a great, certainly a great character, and he, brilliant. Another great lad, but he was. No, he was a good guy in the dressing room, wasn't he? Yeah. Good lad to go to battle with. One of the things I'd say in terms of disappointments was the fact that we played Chelsea so often. Mm. I think there's something weird, you know. Yeah, don't get me wrong, some yeah. of my greatest memories were like when we beat Chelsea in the semi final, it's great. But we had them, we played them four times, and you know, you'd try to play like a Munich or a, you know, just it doesn't sure. something about yeah. playing an English it's like team. Watching that United Europe. against Chelsea in the final. Yeah. In, it doesn't in Russia. feel right, does it? That was yeah. a poor game, that. No. And you knew the games would take a lot more out of your emotion, yeah. didn't you? Yeah. yeah. The build up and the pressure. And you play so in Europe more. to play against obviously the best European yeah. teams, but yeah, that's just the way the, obviously the game was going. More English teams involved. Yeah. I, I never played against, I don't think I ever played against an English team in Europe, ever. Played over 100 games in the Champions League, I think, but I don't think I ever played against. The, obviously, I didn't play in the final, I was injured in 2008. I don't think you would have done either. No, no. I did either, actually. Am I allowed to blow my own trumpet just, 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 just for the one time? Course, yeah. Just for the one time. Oh, yeah, blow just, it, yeah. Just, just for the one time today. Yeah. I've played more European games than any other English player in history. Wow. Well done, James. Thank you. Well done. Thanks, Sean. Brilliant. Congratulations, James. <laughs> That's brilliant. 150. Seriously. Bear that wow. money, yeah? Wow. Fucking hell. Giggs has played more, but he's Welsh, isn't he? <laughs> 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 did you ever play, did you play against Celtic and Rangers then? Did you have played against them? My first European game was Celtic. 
at home. The, remember when McManaman scored the goal? The dribble at yeah. Parkhead. Yeah. I, I just got in the time. I was on the bench that night and my first European game was the return of that. So we drew 2-2 there and drew 0-0 at home, went through on away goals. Oh, right. So that was my first one, Celtic. Yeah. We got beat against Celtic. The Japanese boy yeah. scored. And I, yeah. Oh, my God. We absolutely killed them in the first... I mean, killed them. And we just couldn't put the ball in the back of that and they went and scored. What's, what's he called, the Japanese? Yeah. Na uh, Nakamura? Something like that? Yeah, yeah I think it is. Nakamura that. or something. Yeah. 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 He was a good player, him. And he was obviously really good at set yeah. pieces. And, the best and Rangers, man, we played against Rangers. Yeah, and the best... That, that, that row was the best Celtic atmosphere. Celtic, yeah. What, yeah. What, what the best it? atmosphere yeah. I've oh, ever Celtic. seen in my life was Ibrox as the game was about to I thought, what the fuck so. is this? Mm. I've n I mean, look, Celtic was Phil loud. Phil scored, didn't he? And Galatasaray was like, but yeah, Phil scored yeah, early on. Honestly, the, the, for the first couple of minutes, like before the game and, and when the game started, I've never seen anything like that in my life. Noise. Mm. Yeah. Ibrox. Honestly, yeah. it was unbelievable. Staggering. Mm. Celtic Park's better atmosphere, Don. Yeah. But anyway, Phil, Phil scored. The winner. Nice one. Phil Neville. What had a bad game say? that night. Huh? You had a bad one? Yeah, I was playing against Peter Lovenkrantz. He was quick. Oh, how quick was he? Oh, my God, he was quick. And they just kept putting it over. She'd me. have a lot of difficult nights. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus Christ. <laughs> Never every time we look at a game, yeah, I was, was cut out. Yeah, yeah did you go in with really him? He was quick. Uh, he was quick. He was quick. So you were, you just really wanted to be up against a slow, wide player. <laughs> we uh, had problems with Fran. All the Because they used to go in the pocket and go in the problem. Fran the Michelin man. All the Mars? Uh, what was the best atmosphere? So you said Ibrox. I think Galatasaray was something Galatasaray, special, yeah. but I think Ibrox for noise was the bit... Because Galatasaray Stadium, Ali Samien Stadium, it was open, it was a bowl, mm. but it was open. So they didn't have the sort of roof, whereas obviously Ibrox has the roof around it. So for, no, for I think for nastiness and hostility, Galatasaray, okay, anyway, and so, yeah. that was unbelievable. And, and Everyone always mentions Turkey, and Turkey. they're right. Oh, I always think like Olympiacos and places like that are absolutely oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. mad. Yeah, Panathinaikos. They're yeah, in the yeah. stadium. They're in the yeah. stadium. They're two hours before. Hours, like, have they got different voice like boxes than we have or something? They've got something going on in there. <laughs> have they got microphones in the, in what, the inside the we, heads or something? I mean, we played um, we played Torino. <laughs> we played Torino in, like in the cup. And I've never that, that atmosphere was amazing with the the pyrotechnic and the whistling all game. It was like deafening. You know, you when someone's here, you can't hear. It, it was deafening. Score? No, I didn't. Know. Do you remember we walked out in Milan, San Siro, uh, uh, to play Inter in the second leg of the quarter final night, and they were throwing oranges at us on the pitch. Was it? Do you remember that? You don't remember? No. Apparently, the only trauma the bad players. <laughs> <laughs> no, I don't, Gary. Honestly, no. Oranges? Yeah. Weird. <laughs> <laughs> it's a mad tunnel of San Siro, isn't it? Yeah, I love the San Siro. It's just so big. Like all the stadiums are like it now. You can drive in and you're going up underneath. But it's hey, they were decent like, amazing. Into that time, they? And I remember when we when we got there, they all had on. It was like fucking going. What, someone they just come off a spaceship. <laughs> they all had like, in this long black coat. So when they came well, in, Georgia they were all would, like, Georgia had kitted them out, haven't they? Georgia they Armani. Had long we went yeah. in our two bob tracksuits and stuff. Yeah. And they had this long coat. They all fucking came in like Darth Vader. It was like, it, it's so intimidating. Well, they look smarter than you. Oh, they look it's amazing. They look possible. really good. They oh, really right. did look good. It was so that. intimidating. Amazing, they were. It's always good to blame all them stadiums, <clears> on <throat> it? You, you know, you're a kid growing up watching Milan's and all these, you know, these teams and the stadiums. Uh, you, did you want to play the big... I, I wanted to play. I always remember when we... The UEFA Cup, uh, 2001, the draw, and it was... Obviously, ourselves, Barcelona, mm. Alaves, and I think a German team, I'm not sure it was, but it wasn't like a Munich or a Dortmund. And the draw happened, and we got Barcelona. And we were watching it on TV, and I was like, yes. But and a lot of people were going, what? And I'm thinking, I want to play them. I want to play in the new camp. Absolutely. Yeah. You know what it's like? Because yeah, the other teams weren't like big names. So I was like, you've got to play in the you new do, camp, yeah. haven't yeah. you? Yeah, of course you, you know, do. just like, oh. Yeah. Did you, I used to like it going over there the day before. I loved it. A train the stadium. Yeah. yeah. Oh, that was a, yeah, yeah. You can take it in more, can't you? Yeah. When, when you go out for the warm up in the game, you've got to like. But when you're, in, you're sort of just looking yeah. around, aren't you? But the beauty is when you that. when you play some of them big teams, and when you're playing for United or a big club, and in England you're kind of the, and then you come up against these teams, and oh, they, this, but they look at you as you go, yeah, well, yeah. <laughs> we're as big as you, pal. You know, we have a fire, and you go, yeah, yeah, oh, this yeah. is going to be a battle here. You know, they didn't care. Do you remember when Mick Hucknall trained with us? That's right. <laughs> <laughs> I just remember the night before the battle. You struggled against him. <laughs> <laughs> he, kept, he kept dropping in their little holes. <laughs> Someone get to Mick. <laughs> Bobby Charlton trained us one night. Bobby, Bobby was 60 yard. Bobby joined in. Yeah, he did. Like before the game. Yeah. So basically, one night we, it was the bar we were playing away in Barcelona. I think it was the night we lost 4 0. 
Yeah. It was an I lost 4-0. That, 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 I didn't think he'd start him. <laughs> One session, he's straight in. I think the manager, I got, he got free tickets for a concert, I'm sure he did. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Nick Utnall trained with us the night before the game. It was quite relaxed, it was nice. I know, but you'd, I, I used to hear all that stuff as well. You know I mean? I know it's the night before, but imagine these lads joining. Tra imagine that happening now. Fucking ridiculous. Mm. Let's talk about Arsenal, shall we? Because obviously it's a sore point, isn't it, for yes, Arsenal? Yes, it is. We'd be yes, here all day, won't we? I remember, once, I remember when I signed, because obviously they won the league the year before I came, and you have, like you said, you have to win the, you have to win the league to get in it. And we, we ended up, we, I, I wasn't eligible until, until after the Benfica game. We went there and I think... Was that straight into knockouts, right, even then? I think so. I think so. They gave you a two-win at home, didn't they? Oh, fuck me. You know, the thing is, is that we went over... I think it was 3-3-1 three, three, at home. That, yeah, no, four, it might have been four. Who was it? Benfica, yeah. a guy called Isais. Right, when you play over... You know, <laughs> Sounds a good player, doesn't <laughs> it? Yeah. I remember the, the, um, the headlines was, cry your Isais out. Like, that's it. <laughs> <laughs> but, like, you know what? It was one of, we, we went over there and I think we, I think we drew with him, Kevin Campbell. Can we score a couple? <laughs> but then they came and they, they fuck it. They, done, they beat us counter-attacking. Cool. And I think off of the back of that, that's when George Graham kind of changed everything to make us more defensive. You know what I mean? Because like we got absolutely torn to shreds on the, on the counter-attack at home. We couldn't get near them. And did you have to play at Wembley a few games? Was that, no, that, that was that a different that was, time, right? That was after, that was after because right. obviously after that, we didn't, we didn't, I didn't it's, get it's, to it's play in it. Funny you, didn't. It's funny what you say there, because if you go back sort of, I know you're going back a long time, but obviously Liverpool's success in Europe, a lot of it they speak about goes back to Ajax beat Liverpool 5-1 with Johan Cruyff in the 60s and, you know, all this, uh, I'm not sure exactly what year, it would have been probably 60s. Early 70s. No, I think it might have been a little bit... Cruyff's only like about 18 or 19. Right. He's absolutely just ripped Liverpool to bits. Bill Shankly's the manager. Mm. And when you think about Liverpool winning years later, it wasn't, I don't think, hugely exciting football with wingers. Because mm. it was really solid going away from home, getting your nil-nil, using the Anfield crowd. A lot of the finals, I don't think, were great spectacles. Yeah, no. You know, Liverpool winning 1-0 in finals or, you know, Roma penalties, I think. Mm. 1-0 at Wembley against, uh, in 78, yes. Kenny Dalglish scores. Kenny Dalglish for the chip, Bruges. Yeah. Uh, winning 1-0 yeah. against... So, uh, when you talk about that, I think that probably happened to Liverpool sort of 20, 30 years before, yeah. in terms of, like, we can't play the way Did Forrest do the same, yeah. though? Did, did, were Forrest, Forrest a bit like yeah. a clean sheets yeah. playing club? Peter Shilton. Yeah. Peter Shilton, yeah. Peter Shilton, 100%, yeah. But the away goal was a killer, wasn't it? Of course, yeah. The course. away goal was a killer. I mean, you were done, weren't you? So but, you do, but do you think... I think that was... I, I thought that made your... European football, amazing. So you thought it was better with the away goal? Yes. 100% because yes. one, one goal could take you from losing to winning. Whereas now it's just like, if you get a goal, you go from losing to drawing or drawing to winning. It could just completely When the team tear. scores against you, it knocks you back, doesn't oh, it? It's so yeah. quiet, oh. isn't it? It's so quiet, it's like everybody realises, oh no, they've got an away yeah. goal. I thought it was special, yeah. the away goal. Jeez, but I'm, but I'm, that Leverkusen, I, there's certain games, I, can, I, I know you have to move on and like that, Leverkusen that. I can see. I can still see all these chants in that game. Mm. I stood behind him. You're asking a player, who would you want to yeah. certainly hit the target? And Ali over the bar. We had one against. And Chelsea. I, I still, I bring it up when I see him. No, I still <laughs> mention the chance he missed against. It. Forget what it brilliant he was. I went, you. You had to take that chance. Fucking hit the target. <laughs> Egg. <laughs> <laughs> we need to get Ollie on the podcast, yeah. <laughs> I get Ollie on. I get that in video. It's naive. Welcome, like, welcome to stick to football. Obviously, <laughs> like when with us in the final, when we was in the final, like you know, the second, like the second year, and Naeem from the halfway, like it was devastating because like I started thinking about right, I'm gonna take take a penalty. I'm, I'm probably gonna, he's gonna probably like, get the fifth one. <laughs> fucking looked over. Naeem's just fuck. You know when you see him just fucking. Is that last minute, Rady? Is this fucking last is second? Is that last kick of extra time? Second. Oh, yeah, yeah. It was yeah. like to rip your heart out and let you see it before you <laughs> fucking fall over. And he and the thing is, when he hit it, I just thought, I oh, saw. So you looked at the goalie and you could see he was fucking backtracked. He was like Jesus. And then when you saw it going, fucking hell. Some bit of skill there was that. Wasn't it amazing, but the skill that. You know something? The opportunism. Is what I just thought to myself, you know what I mean? You're not expecting it because I'm, like I said, I'm thinking about, yes, the penalty's okay. Where are you going to put it? Yeah, thinking, and then bam, he does that. And then what happened was is that because <laughs> I was this side and all their fans, Zaragoza, they were all down there. And you know, when you see other fans erupt, just fucking, I was, yeah. my heart was broken.
it's and trampled upon. Because you also, you never played the year before when they won it? No, that's... I got suspended. That was another one. Like the most ridiculous challenge in the semi-final. Uh, the fella's you... fucking going that way and I'm tackling him. He's going back towards goal and I tackled him on the line. You were suspended more than me, right here. <laughs> Who's winning the Champions League this season? Wow. Who, Trey, let's, Man before, City. Before I ask, before I I ask that, that which, which of the English clubs that are left in it? Are, Man City. Uh, how are they going to fare? Who's left in it? Remind us of the draw, guys. I think Man City. I think Man City is going to do it. We've got Arsenal against Porto. Right. And we've got City against Copenhagen. We've got PSG, Sociedad, PSV, Dortmund, Leipzig, Real Madrid, Bayern Munich, Lazio, Atletico, Inter, Barcelona, Napoli. Oh. I, I think there's only... Who can compete with City? That's what I think. That's the only thing. Maybe Bayern Munich. In terms of, they have, they have got names who I think if they go on the pitch, they will not feel yeah. inferior. But did, did City, City beat them easily? Yeah, they're the over best, the two, they're yeah, the best they're, team, yeah. You just think over two, I don't think hard it was that easy. City. I thought the first game, that first, um, the, the game that City won 3-0 at home, was it? The first half, it was 3-0 yeah, to City. Yeah, and yeah, I yeah. thought Bayern Munich was pretty good in that half. I yeah. sounds crazy. I thought Bayern Munich... No, I, I agree. I, I City, think Rodri scores one, doesn't he? Yeah. The keeper should say. Yeah. Yeah. Bayern Munich were very good in that game. I know it's 3-0 and it ends up looking like a stupid statement, but it was closer than that. Mm. Um, I'd, I'd probably City your favourites. You think City win it again, back-to-back? Back? Oh, I don't know. No, I'm not sure. I just don't know. I, I think that, because you just think in Europe, you don't want to take something, yeah. a refereeing decision or the odd game doesn't go right, someone's just, injured. Just but so strong. And I just don't know who can... I just don't think there's that and they've many done it. teams in Europe. Madrid aren't at mm. their best. No. I don't think Munich are at their best. PSG, I don't think... Can Arsenal win it this year? I'd love Arsenal to get there. They defend well. If we, if we got, if and the counter-attack counter 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 well. If, if we got there in the final with City, I'd feel more confident. Just, just I could see Arsenal losing to a team they should beat. Yeah, if you know what I mean? Because like that, that mentality of not feeling Especially when I look the, at us at the European minute, giants. The, you know, you look at our, our, we, we've got to, you've got to be more ruthless um, with the chances. You've got to see games off so you can relax in games. And at the moment, we, we, you know, we're, we're, we're not taking those chances, even though in the end, we won the game, but fucking hell, man. If we, if we could take those chances, I'd be more confident about going to play these teams because we're defending a lot better. But I'd love Arsenal to get City in the quarters. Interesting. Because I think Arsenal that are one of the few teams yeah. in there who could, That's the maybe thing. could knock City out, but also... Is that for I, Liverpool for the league? Yeah, because I think, I, I, as you said before, when you play an English team, everything ramps up in Europe. The, yeah. the, the prayer, everything. Mm. You don't, your league games before and after, it's like this game becomes so big, and I think that probably would help Liverpool, but... Yeah. <laughs> don't, we don't want City to win it again, do we? Jesus. If City got to the final against somebody, I'd still probably want them to win simply because... How many European clubs have United won? Three? Three. City beyond two. City beyond two. Oh, it's too close to comfort, that. Yeah. I wonder we, if Pep's getting we tired. We thought we were going to get close to you. It'd be a very long time, though. It could happen quite quickly at some point. No. Liverpool are just made for Europe. They just, if, if Liverpool are in the Champions League, you think they've got a great chance of winning just because of Anfield and... You know, we talk about. I what always think about, about what this. is it about you? Well, obviously, you've got a great record in Europe, but what is it? What? What is? I, I think, I think there's a a belief because they it's feed off of that emotion, man. and then it's almost like the opposite in the Premier yeah. League when we'd be going for the league, and you'd almost think, are we good enough? You go almost, like, but in yeah. Europe, you think at Anfield, we take anyone on. Yeah. You know, and you think of the atmosphere, and the history, and because you've been there before, yeah. you believe you're going to do it again. It's just like. It's like yeah. I mean, the history helps Liverpool. The yeah. history yeah. and it helps sort of big European yeah. teams. It does get you over the line and sort of yeah. they do. Of doubt. They do. Even when you, I remember when you, when City went there not longer, and I, I was, yeah. I remember doing, a, doing, doing, doing one of the shows I was doing, and I was saying the thing is, is that City. I'm not sure if they understand L Liverpool on a European night at Anfield. Yeah. It is different. Oh. It you know really, what, really is. You know what I think helps. We talk about Anfield in terms of the atmosphere, the size of the pitch. I sometimes think of so when you are playing all the time, when you play a good European team and you feel like you're chasing, you can't get near them. Anfield's just that little bit tighter, yeah, yeah. smaller. You no, can get after people. In terms of size, it can't be it's that smaller, much. It's smaller than sort of uh, an Old Trafford. Old right. Trafford always felt massive. Yeah, yeah. But that much massive. smaller, if you know what I mean. Wouldn't be that. Maybe it's right. a psychological thing. Right. The crowd are right on top of you, but it's definitely, it, definitely it is definitely way, yeah. smaller. But you feel like you're not going to out football European teams. You feel like we're going to get after them. And when when good teams used to come to Old Trafford and, and they were good and they were at it and you were just off it, it was big spaces. Yeah. It? yeah. It, was big spaces. it never felt like that at Anfield, yeah. if you know what I mean. But in 2005, you know what I mean, especially it was that, what Stevie scored right at the death there with that brilliant strike. The PR cost, yeah. Yeah, because yeah, like, you look at that, that Liverpool side and you just... I remember that Stevie done an interview and he was talking about... Yeah, yeah. You know, he kind of done an interview, he was playing it down well, you know, with, 
we're just getting on with it, you know what I mean? No one, no one fancied Liverpool to get to that final and then they got to that final and again... The, the interview right, he was actually, he was doing the press for right. that game. So the right. interview came out the morning of the game. Wow. And he was basically saying, I need to be playing Champions League football. Because it wasn't about us winning the Champions League because if we'd have gone out there, obviously we're not in the Champions League that season, but we were struggling in the league. Yeah. We didn't actually, we qualified because we won it yeah. for the next season. So what he was basically saying is that, we need to, yeah. He was talking about maybe moving maybe leaving, on if yeah. we don't get Champions League football. So, one, well, we need to win this game and, and stay in it and then see where we go. I sometimes, I, I do, I think a lot about what would have happened there. If, if Stevie's shot goes past the mm. post, there's no Istanbul. I don't think Stevie Gerrard's at Liverpool. I think he moves on. And you just think of you know, the dynamic of that, you know, a local player, where would he have gone? What would we have done with the money? Wow. You know what I mean? He might, he might have said yes to me when I went into yeah. it. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Talk to us about Turin. Mm. The game that ultimately everyone says was your best game ever, greatest game ever. Uh, no, I, don't, I certainly wouldn't agree with that. But I think it was a brilliant team effort to come back. It came to the Some fall. brilliant players and... Again, it's a good header. We should have been, <laughs> we should have been out of it in the first game. If you remember, Juventus was obviously excellent over time. Whereas we scored later on to yeah. get an equaliser, big goal, two 0 down over it again. The away goals comes into it, and with some brilliant, brilliant strikers, brilliant players, it was just all that was meant to talented be, players. Right? Yeah, it's sometimes it's meant to be. Don't go talk about final. Liverpool. You're talking about that. You don't go two 0 down to get to that Juventus team mm, and, come back. and come back. That was a thing that I thought at the time. I always remember Bex that game saying. We'd had a difficult start the defence mm. down that side. In Zag, <laughs> in Zag. I remember you holding someone on one of the goals. <laughs> in Zag, oh, yeah. The ball's there and you've got all of them. The you had a bad habit. Ronnie Johnson was the same. The ball comes back. Two lads are fucked. Somebody's getting in there going, I've got my man. Yeah, he, he was my man that scored. <laughs> I didn't have someone else's man. The ball comes right in. But he ends up putting it in like three yards from goal. It's yeah. weird. Do you know what I mean? It's like one yeah, of the right, big, yeah. You're so close to goal. But anyway, a bit 2 nil down. So you're asking where's your goalkeeper. Is that what you're thinking? No, or? No, just I, you just don't normally expect. He just kept going and going. He's one of them that went past the back post. Oh, and Coley, I, I, Coley scored in that game, right? Yeah. Coley, Coley yeah. Went yeah. In, but in, before yeah. that, I think there was a deflection down that channel where, I don't know if it was Inzaghi, off Yap, and it went over Peter's head yeah. and lobbed into the far corner. I was like, yeah. oh my God. And then to be fair, you scored the header. Well, that's where the weird goals are. a benefit. You go, listen, yeah. if you get back to two, you You scored two. the header yes. and Bex came up to me and he never, Bex was quite quiet on the pitch. He said, fucking come on, we're going to do it. And I thought, fuck hell, for him to say that, right, you know yeah. what I mean? I always remember that. But again, you get that momentum in your season. Yeah. I know we keep going back, Liverpool in the FA Cup that early in the season. Yeah. You get little breaks. Juventus, the game should have been done. Juventus let us off the hook in the first leg. Absolutely. Yeah, but, then you, yeah, but then you punished them. That was, of course. That was the when the second goal them. goes in, it was, yeah. You know, you, know, with, you know, with the final, you know, you're saying about Juventus and you got, like, I, I, I swear to God, that was, if that was a boxing match, it's fucking... That, that, that it's was, that's stop. like fate, fate and sort of like, because... You know, Roy's not playing, Scholes, Scholes is not is, playing. Yeah. They've, they, I think, I would say they battered us. They probably battered us probably for 75 minutes. They, the Beckham, bar, the, Beckham, the post. Beckham, I watched that game back for, for a book, I don't know, two or three years ago. Beckham was unbelievable in that game. You know, for some, I, I never feel that like Beckham gets the respect he deserves as a player because people say, oh, he's off the pitch mm -hmm. stuff and all that. His performance that night, considering obviously Roy's out, Scholes is out, the responsibility he took that. That night in terms of getting the ball off him, dictating the play, knocking long passes, is, so he was a, all over the pitch. Yeah. There was a moment in that game though that it changed was when he moved from centre right, midfield yeah. to the wide. It changed. Yorkie went back into midfield with Butsy. Giggsy went left. Bex went right, and then we had Teddy and Ollie up front. Teddy and Ollie, yeah. And we ended up four four two for the first time. Giggsy was played on the right that night for seventy five minutes. Never played with Giggs in my life. He never played with me. Dwight York. York was up front with Coley. Right. And then Jesper was on the left. Right. And That's Bex right. was in central, central midfield with Butty. And we were just all over the place. Like the patterns that you see people like Giggs didn't know where I was, I didn't know where he was. Same in the midfield. It was like Butty and Bex. Did you practice that? Or was, no, was no. That, we, we, just we, done it on... we only found out, well, it was a couple of weeks before that Roy and uh, Scholes couldn't play. Oh, but because all the games that we had were like, Last game of the, the FA Cup final, we had the last yeah. game of the league. You couldn't practice your team for the. It wasn't like we had any games in hand to be able to work with. It was like a, a bit of luck at the end and good set piece delivery. You know, yeah, down to that, does that? I mean, I'm, I still feel bad to this day about you and Scholes not playing that day because obviously, you know, do you still feel that sing, sometimes that little bit of horror, that horrible uh, feeling? Yeah, you do. would do. Your, your standard answer is when people ask you, "Oh, that's life," but yeah, it's heartbreaking when you yeah. miss a big game like that. But your mindset at the time is. 
again, you're United, you're going to be competing. You're convinced you'd probably get back to another final. Yep. Yeah. You don't. So, yeah, you, you obviously that scored the event. You did get back to another one. I didn't. And that's that's the reality. And yeah. That's the brutal side of the game, isn't it? But, yeah, you would be your... You'd be you'd be heartbroken missing you, missing a big you know, like that. You, you, know, you wouldn't miss it now, would you? Because I think they cancel them do they? just before. I can't, do they do something yeah, now? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You can't be suspended. Oh, no, yeah, just I've just, just my luck that. But anyway, but I, again, if we won it or go back to it, I remember I was injured. Anyway, I got injured in the cup final. So, so were you not? Were you, would you not have been fit for the? Oh man, I was knackered. No, right. No, I was. I was. I think I was. I don't know if I was still on crutches for a few days after the game. Didn't stop me going out in Barcelona. I was going to say, I, long. Yeah, I yeah. don't think you were on crutches no, when I saw you. <laughs> <laughs> I left them in my room. <laughs> so I remember. But you're right about like, modern players. I'm rooming with Dennis. Mm. So we go away, and I obviously I'm suspended and I'm injured. And I have a couple of nights out, and I'm going back into the room, and Dennis is kind of having trying to get some decent night's sleep. And I'm coming back to the room four or five in the morning, and I'm not quite jumping on his bed, waking him up, but I bet he's thinking, you know, any chance? Yeah. I was just kind of. You and, Sco you and Scalzi went out at lunch on the day of the game, didn't you? Yeah, we were drinks. hungry, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I like you're all to Because I, 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 I always remember you walking back in at like sort of pre oh, match yeah. and thinking, they look a bit rosy. Yeah, no, do you know what? Do you know party? Do you know and what it is? Sometimes when we're over it and Scalzi's the same, you're, you're, you're feeling that, you're feeling kind of out of it, really. Yeah, you're, yeah, you're, yeah. It's awkward, you're not really involved. So what do you do? Yeah, I, remember the I remember when the corners with, with Bex with the. Oh, great with delivery. the corners, yeah. it's just yeah. like you know when it was happening. You're thinking that something's got to happen now. Yeah. This is it. Man, he put two. He put two corners in the fucking. But even when it breaks, I think the Jesus first goal where Byron don't clear it properly. It's yeah. all little bits. And then Giggs miss kicked it. Miss kicked it to Teddy. Teddy then booked it in. Remember the defender punching the floor was it Kafour? Oh, Kafour. Can you can I say you see with um, Ole? I was doing the same. Ole's, Ole's goal. <laughs> <laughs> with Ole's goal, with the because Teddy, I think Teddy flicked yeah. it again. The way he just yeah. he's instinctive, boom. It was just again, you know what I mean? It's just like fuck, people think, yeah, but he's right there. It one, was one touch finish. Oh mate, I was very excited for United that day. You know what I mean? You, you can't help but jump, and then you think, oh fuck. When I look back now, you should you should lifted the trophy really first time that night. Obviously, on no, the pitch, I no, think. I would, no, I don't agree with that. Come on with your kit on. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Pants on. No, no, I, no, I don't agree with no? that. No? No, when I see... I, I'm not against other people doing it, or I know the rules have changed, or I think you can't be suspended. Or, but at the time, no, I, I would think you I would have no been... Would you have said no if somebody said... Yeah, I would, I, would have been, I, would have been, I would have been really embarrassed. I would have been cringing, actually. Yeah. Uh, I don't, no, uh, we've been down at the end, me I know, I don't, I don't But that was it. like an hour after... That was like really laid into it, where the lads obviously sent out on the pitch for... Mm. Definitely far... To, and even then, it's like... Come out and you're like, really? Yeah. You know, it's, you're cringing. One of my regrets about when we, uh, well, Stevie lifted the trophy, I'm not on any picture. I'm <gasps> like, That's fucking right, criminal, isn't it? bro. Why not? I'm at the back, stretching my calf. I'm getting cramp after the game. So when you're like, there's like a shot from up above, and you see like players who have only played Jesus, two games. Jamie. The right back here, a Spanish lad, Josemi, he's like writing, he's on every picture. Yeah. And I'm stretching my calf at the back and I'm thinking, oh, oh my God. Murray, you know so you... whenever I sign the picture, I'm signing fucking yeah. over the Josemi's head. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> you know? Uh... What is the one thing you did that was the biggest factor in you becoming a professional footballer? Oh. Fucking hell. Fucking your mates off, wasn't it? <laughs> <laughs> it's not a bad thing. It's not a bad no, but thing. But you know something? We were talking about Marcus Rashford last mm. week, weren't we? About having that right group of people around him. And you yeah. say that you, mm. you can't do the things that your friends are doing. So if you're influenced by your friends mm. slightly, some it's lads, exactly. young lad, you do, you, there is that element of, oh, go on then. And that go on then would have done me. That, don't, that, go, on, that go on then would have, there was no go on then I was going to go out. I never, I never went out. In the first five, six years of my career at United, until 16 to 21. Mm. I couldn't. I don't think I could have done. Yeah, and, that's your personality. And I think that, to be fair, I, I think to me it was work ethic. Work, it, and to be fair, nice. love for the club, work ethic, listened, mm. trained, wanted to do well. I think those are things. It, but you've got all the rewards for that, Gary. Yeah, I think, but, they're, they're the well, things, yes. but they're the things that, to me, are the biggest factor. So what, what's the question? Well, what's what? the biggest factor in you becoming a professional football player? I think also the other thing, that sort of like a different level, not on an individual level, but the club at the time, for me, the manager wanted to bring young players through. He was brave. And the big thing was the Blackburn night, I think, changed the whole club. 
where we won the league for the first time mm. against Black, but obviously we won it yeah. the day before. But yeah. that, that, that night was the best night in Manchester United's modern history. It changed the whole club forever, that. Mm. And then people say to me, what's the most important trophy? That is the most important trophy. It unlocked the doors. Mm. We won the Youth Cup and we had belief, but we were coming into a machine of a club that was like, we, we, were, mm. we were confident. We were coming into a dressing room that was stable, confident, was winning. And I think that changed everything. The timing. Timing, you yeah. player. The, the, the timing. Club. And the, the club was made for us at that time. Again, the, the, the dressing room you walk into, the manager you're playing for, I came off to Forest, obviously, as you know, I played League of Ireland, going to walk with Brian Clough. Yeah. Give me an opportunity, throw me straight in. You're like, you need someone to give you a break. Yeah. Yeah. You've got to work hard and train hard if you want to be professional football and take that opportunity. Yeah. The dressing room you walked into, we keep talking about senior players being a good example. I walked in, it was, I can't praise Stuart Pearce enough. I looked at Stuart Pearce and go, well, what a top pro he was. If I can't learn from him, Des Walker, different personality, mm. but Des Walker, you respect for Nigel Clough, these players are looking and going, if I can learn from what being a professional footballer is all about. And then great messages, mm. great it, messages from Brian Clough. It, it's interesting you say that, Roy, about the sort of like what we came into. And at, at that time, Liverpool had a really talented group of young players. Like, and I, I don't dismiss that they, some of them were as talented as we were, like Matt Manneman and Fowler. Mm. Jamie Redknapp, um, there's probably a couple of others to be fair. Rob Jones was with Rob yeah, Jones the, involved in that. And their senior players were, were big drinkers. David Thomp was it David Thompson? He was a good yeah, player. Yeah, he was coming a bit later. He was a talented yeah. boy. Yeah, yeah. A real talented group at Liverpool. There was one year where we were pushing us close to the title, I think it was 95, 96. But our senior players, I felt they, they were more professional. Mm. And I felt our senior players were more talented, obviously, but they were more professional. And I felt I as so. I, I, th I think if those young Liverpool players would have come into our dressing room and we'd have gone into that do dressing you think, room. Do you think United lads at the time, go back now, Rob or Brucey, No, Pally. but I think, I, I, I know what you're saying, but I think that the, to me there, was a, there wasn't an excess that was like, would put games in doubt. I think that the Liverpool lads, I always remember seeing a couple of them in cheerleaders. Remember cheerleaders? Yeah. <laughs> Vaguely. So, so, <laughs> so cheerleaders Wednesday night. I went a couple of times, right? And yeah. I remember the Liverpool lads were over in the corner. They'd come over to Liverpool to United. Yeah. But the United lads would go on probably like at one half, but they were like, I think, four, five, on a Wednesday. I don't, but I'll, I'll disagree with that. But I, you might, I don't know. No, there's I, a few hours out with Sharpie and other lads, and we, we would be going home at one o'clock. I think, I think, I think we've been unfair to the Liverpool lads as if. You know, I and think then, well, what's the difference then? I think the difference was, and I've. Spoke about this a few times. This was a team I was almost just mm. getting into on the fringes. And what I would say is the class of 92 had obviously amazing players. But when you were coming into the team, the best players were Schmeichel, Roy Keane, Cantona. Yeah, yeah. Liverpool's lads who came into the team were Liverpool's best players. So Fowler was Liverpool's best player and Mac Manaman. Uh, obviously, Stevie comes in and you've got Michael Owen as well. So, the, the, and who was the senior players then at Liverpool? Would, would, the probably two senior players who I can remember were John Barnes and Ian Rush, absolute legends, but they were like yeah. at the right Neil at Ruddock, the end. Neil Ruddock would have been the centre back. Yeah, but he wouldn't have been one of Liverpool's best John players. Scales. No, John yeah, Scales. That's what I'm saying. John experienced players. Was Ronnie Whelan there then? No, he, no he, he'd left then, but my point was the, the yous had them, they, yeah. they oh, no, probably guided absolutely. you, yeah. whereas yeah. Liverpool's yeah. young lads coming through were almost. Fowler had 18, 19, was Liverpool's best player. Same with Michael Owen, same with Stephen Gerrard. You know, so it was never like that right. Roy Keane, Schmeichel, yeah. Cantona figure that you sort of looking up to to sort of drag you yeah. along. Yeah. Well, it's That's a massive huge. factor, the dressing room that you come into as a young player mm. and the influences mm. and standard bearers in the dressing room is huge. Mm. It's huge. I think these United young lads that have come through in the last five, six, seven, yeah. eight years, mm. if you're a young lad coming through at Liverpool, you've got really good, good chance. Really good chance. Yeah. If you're at City, you've got a really good chance. Whereas if you're at United now, yeah. You're thinking, who's guiding that dressing room? Who's sorting when that? I walked, that when I walked to United, United remember, I came from another club. That's why club. Rashford's got to be there. So what I'm saying is me and Steve, he's, he's, he's 26. But he's 26, but you don't... He's 20, but you can't keep saying not, who's older than him, who's yeah. above him. But, but, but me, me and Steve came Roy into probably, a group of teams. When were you captain? You then become the leader. You've got to grab it. What age are you captain? What age are you captain? Uh, you know, when so when did Bruce leave? And, and no, when, did, I, I, when Eric left. When Eric left. So when did Eric leave? 96, 97. Right. So okay. what, 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 what age were you then? I would have been 26. 26, 26. Yeah. So Roy Keane, only Roy really started to assume the mantle of like the real sort of like, I mean, obviously he was playing unbelievably well before then, but the real sort of like dominant, inspirational captain happened after 26. But Marcus Rashford is nothing like Roy Keane in personality know, or character. I know, but what I'm saying is he has to become... It could have become. Have to be Roy Keane, mm. but he has to do it a different way. Like Stevie Gerrard, completely different player to Rashford. But what I'm saying is I was someone who'd be shouting and screaming at people on the referee and, and other players. Stevie did it by sort of like his whole ability and the respect mm. he had from the other players. I'm not saying Rashford's got to go around 
ranting and raving, but just like his body language and being so that you can just feel it when someone, I, someone becomes a leader. I feel like when I'm watching Trent Alexander-Arnold this season, even yeah, though his right. numbers might mm. be the same, it's just a body language, just a yeah, yeah. feeling that he's got on the pitch. Right. That he's, yeah. he's getting old. Well, when I went to United, yeah. Jamie, when, remember I came presence. in from another club. I had my three years at Forest, again, working with brilliant senior players. But when I went to United and walked in, and again, United just won the league and the momentum was there and obviously lads are coming through. But I loved it. I loved all the lads in the dressing room. You might go, I know you remember he can play tricks in you, but I, I thought they were all, not all 100% brilliant pros, because yeah. they had like a few pints like everything else. But I looked around and went, what a good group of people these are. Mm -hmm. Parks, Andres, yeah, Sharpie, yeah. like... Yeah. Giggs, uh, Robbo, these lads were like... You had, you had, you had Brian Robson, Chalky, Steve Bruce, Gary Pallister, Incy. Brian The list Blair, goes on. Incy. Not, you just asked there, could, I, Incy, I could Incy keep going on. Incy, 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 was brilliant Incy gets forgotten. Yeah, United, was, by the even the dressing room, lads. Yeah. He was remember, unbelievable. Remember the dressing room, the cliff. If you remember the cliff, and again, I'd come in and a, a big fee, and at the time, you're going, listen, come to United, an expectation, I want to do... But I was looking around the group, and just the, even the chat, the banter, our first pre-season, we got to South Africa, and I'm going... Mm. I couldn't believe how brilliant it was. Yeah. And I, again, I'd walk with good pros. I actually think you changed after Incy left, because Incy was, I think, you in some ways, not saying he, he was you in some ways in the dressing room. He was the tough love guy in the dressing yeah, he room. Was. He? he was the, he, as he was hard with us, but he was always fair with us, Incy. He was tough with us. He literally, if you made a bad pass, he'd get on to us. He was yeah. massively high standard. But you said that about Peter was hard on you. He was, he was. So, so, yeah, no, but, I'm saying, yeah, but you could deal with that. There's other lads where we're talking about other uh, tough love and put your arm around. But at the time... The, the, but he was the, giving Marcus tough love. The, obviously, that's one of the problems at Man United. There isn't that core of players. And yeah. you're, we're, we're thinking, who is it? Whereas we could just roll off here. Yeah. You just you could mention 10 players but it's the who would help the younger players. You're, 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 don't, don't forget, last season, you're talking about the Man United team going, they've got leaders now, they've yeah. got Casemiro, Maguire, they've got Maguire, Maguire, no, Casemiro got, should be dominating Rashford. Is Maguire we? getting hold of him? No, I, well, I, I, I don't think he would be. No, at the Why moment, not? No, he's not even playing. But you don't have to be playing to get a hold of somebody. Exactly. You were casting a Man United towards last year. You said you didn't play. Know, you changed but, the music. Roy, he's been you changed un everything. Roy, is it? <laughs> Roy's been. He's no, been. He's been, he's been un you know, Harry's been undermined as a leader in that dressing room by having the captain second off him on it. He's been undermined completely. I get that. He must feel completely dejected by what's happened. But going back to the question, is the biggest factor? <laughs> is the biggest factor in your career then the fact that you came into big dressing rooms and with great leaders? But what about on an individual level? What is the biggest factor in you being a success? I suppose always keep like that. The hunger was always a big one for me, never relaxing. Even when you thought you'd done well and you won a league title, you go, I want to win more, you get a new contract, I want to keep going. You don't want again, I always say don't take your eye off the ball. Mm. Keep that keep that focused and yeah. don't 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 relax. Yeah. I think I think for I think for me, it was training the way I played. I think that was a big thing for me. Uh, and that wasn't just me waking up in the morning thinking, we've got to train right. You were that shit all week, were you? No. <laughs> <laughs> but I, I, I couldn't help. I had to think yeah. when I was a kid. So that I, that. I wanted to win that. So every day in training, I couldn't not treat it like a game mm. in training. Yeah. Yeah. Listen, yeah. sometimes some lads yeah. have a little day. Yeah. They're just yeah. open about training. I, that was the big thing for me, training the way I played. Was that every player carrier at Liverpool when you were there? Because we, that was every player at United, I think. We always yeah. trained like... But you mentioned where did Liverpool go. I remember I was speaking to Robbie Fowler about where, and he said there was days at Liverpool, so we're saying, how come Liverpool didn't kick on with all these lads coming yeah. through? And mm -hmm. Robbie did say a couple of times, he went, we maybe didn't train. Like, as well whereas as the, the one thing I'd say at United, whatever we were up yeah. to or not, when we trained... It was proper, but, but that's intense, uh, wasn't it? Whether Robbie's saying that in terms of like, because people say, oh, you know, Roy Evans, you know, was a manager's a little bit weak on the mm. players, and he was the manager who gave me my chance. But I just think that's a personal right. standard of like every day, boom, you know, yeah. just like being aggressive, putting yeah. challenges in. You know, if, I always remember sort of with Benitez, and it used to frustrate the attackers. We worked a lot on sort of being organised. We'd have offside in training. Yeah. And I used to piss the, the attackers right. yeah. off. But in my head, I'd be thinking, right, we've got to get the line up, we've got to yeah. drop off, I've got to stop Torres scoring, I've got to stop mm. Suarez scoring. You know, like, and if you had a bad session, you'd be like, oh, the next day, yeah. you'd be like. So I think that was something that meant that I went into every game almost feeling like, okay, I'm right, because I had to be right. I think me and you were pretty similar like that. Because yeah. you, you didn't have, like, no one would say you were unbelievable ability mm. there, so you were lightning quick. So everything had to be right for me to perform on the Saturday. And I think the other thing that helped me is the city I'm from in that. A little bit of, not arrogance, but a bit of cocky, that bit of like, I'm better than them, I should yeah. be playing. So I'm, I'd go, yeah, but a bit of, I'd go and speak to Roy <laughs> Evans at 18 and go, well, why is, why is Michael Thomas playing ahead of me? Yeah, I yeah. should be playing. And, and actually believe in it, you know, going mm. onto the training pitch. Well, and, yeah. I, I think probably probably coming in as late as I did, 
is probably recognising that the opportunity was there. You know, I played a lot of Sunday football. I used to do a lot of training by myself, try to do dog and do stuff. And then when the opportunity for Palace came, it's recognising this is it. This is it. And then having a manager like Steve Koppel, who he saw something, very raw, but he saw something and he was the one who used to always pull me aside and say things about how hard you have to work. This isn't going to be easy because you've come out of Sunday football, you need to learn how to be a striker, making the runs, linking the play, why you have to hold the ball here, why you have to make that run so he could come in. All these things, Steve Koppel, it, 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 he instilled in me the hard work that's coming and I wasn't afraid of it because the opportunity was something that I was desperate for since the age, age the of hunger, 10. Right? Honestly, right? Honestly, it's the, it's actually, the thing I, what driven me. I, I think you, you obviously played street football mm. and Sunday football, but I think you, when you played for Arsenal, and for England, you played like a street football and a Sunday football. You mm. never left that sort of idea that mm. you have to run as hard as you can, yeah. fight as hard as you can, yeah. scrap as hard as you can. You carried that sort of mentality from mm. Sunday football into like the highest level. It's funny because uh, I remember Steve, he, said, he told me something because right, when you're, when you're playing and you're playing in the build-up play and what they want you to do because you have to link it and how you to lose the ball a lot. And I remember him, him emphasising how important it is for me to keep the ball, but he says, never change the way you, you, you want to finish when you get in the, in the last third. Sh you know, I'd shoot from anywhere. He said, never change that. I, I it was confusing because like, you'd get from, from, the, from the older players, Fucking hold it. And then you get from Steve Koppel, good effort. I always remember Rooney and Sir Alex toward the boss towards the end when Wayne started to drop in a bit and he used to he stopped turning and running at people mm. and stopped running behind. He became more of a sort of like a yeah. link player and passing long right. balls and sort of dropping into midfield. And that was the one thing I remember he must have bollocked him, I don't know, 15, 20 times a season for like the last three or four years that I was there for dropping into the left, dropping yeah. in. He said, get, you, you want him to stay up front and turn at players and take the ball on the back foot and do those yeah. things. Never yeah. lose that bit that made yeah. you sort of like a street footballer. Yes. And it's funny because I remember we played a, played against, I was playing in a cup against some Artley Pool or whoever it was. And the, the defender just kept going on at me about being a you know, Sunday morning, you're a pub player, you're a Sunday morning <laughs> player. And I remember saying to him, fucking, there's 38,000 here, fucking, I'm big time, you fucking, you know what I mean? Right, it's yeah, like, we, should, we should do a demo I, right here of me and you on corners. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I remember what you used to do, you know what you used to do? You see what you used to do on corners? I used to do, Gary. You know what I mean? Even when, like, you know the thing what I used to love about him so, is because... I, I, so the corner would be over there, so I, over I'd, there. I'd always be marking right here, right? And he's doing this, right? Uh, so, this, hang on, like, 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 the like, thing is, Jay, he's like, doing like, all that, but, like, the ball's not even there yet, so even when they're walking over, I can go like that. And he <laughs> And then what happened is, and then I love the crowd behind the goal. I'd go like that to him, and I'd go like that, and Gary would go like that. Ooh. And it was like it was so funny. They go way, but I, to be honest, I never scored one because he's always holding. You know, like you're saying, he's fucking holding you. Yeah, other players scoring, you know what I mean? He's... Yeah, but still, I wanted to score. I wanted to say because I used to like. At, there was something about him and Phil that used to annoy me. I don't know what it was. Remember what I used to call you? Know, he's a fucking chuckle brothers here. You know what I mean? That's, <laughs> I don't know what it was because they were so serious. Jedward. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that was, that was, they went to Jed. <laughs> Jedwood. But like they was they were so serious. And because at the time, you know, obviously being as jealous as I was of Man United, because they were so good. They were so good, you're kind of jealous of them and it was tough. Never had an easy game against them. It was brilliant. I loved it. I loved it. I loved being at that level. Just loved playing against them in those games. Which player that you've played with, and it's a difficult question this, it might be so do you feel had the hunger? All, we've all talked about hunger and hard work, preparing, training, working hard. We've all talked about those same qualities. Which player do you feel that had those qualities, but then, I don't know, got a big contract or something, they won a trophy and then went, and you saw it go straight away? Anybody you can think of? Anybody? No, not... not what, 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 in and around who I played with? Yeah, just where you think you can just see that, like, sort of thing, he's yeah. gone a little bit there. Sharpie was a bit laid back, wasn't he? Was he? Yeah. Sharpie's very laid back, but this is a good guy, but maybe Sharpie would be first to admit that maybe he, with that little Could bit of success... Could have done more? Maybe. I think Sharp would be honest enough to say that because Sharp, he was so laid back. And he was, the manager he was, was always on his yeah. case, you know. And, yeah. and to be fair, again, obviously, when the Leeds got a bad injury, but I think Sharp, he might look back and go... And, and I think he'd be the first to admit it, that he did. Because he got... I mean, before, people, people may remember, may not remember, but before Giggsy came in, I mean, he was literally like the soft... Oh, was a talkie? He was, was a talkie. Yeah. And he went to United. And he scored that goal, didn't he? Ripped Arsenal, Arsenal it was a three yeah. twice. hat trick at Arsenal yeah, in the league. He murdered us. Yeah. And he literally was like the poster boy, wasn't he? He murdered us. So I think Sharpie would be 
could say that maybe he didn't have that real hunger and desire to, to maintain that over a long period of time. Mm. I think at Liverpool, I can't think of someone in terms of, of that, but I've seen players drop off. You know when someone comes into your club and they make a brilliant start and all the fans are getting you know, excited, everyone's thinking, this is a play, and I'd always think, see what he's like when he has a little bad spell. Yeah. You, you, you know, that thing of, can you get through that? And that was the thing that I felt, certainly playing for a big club, the scrutiny, supporters, the press, and that I always thought someone was a, I thought, well, he's got something about him. If he goes through that sort of couple of months that we all go through where you think it's not happening for you, you go out the team, you come back in, the crowd are on you a little bit. Can you come out the other side? And I always felt there was probably two or three players who I can think of who thought, we all thought we've got a star when they first come in. And that first little bad spell, you think, oh, yeah. they don't ever actually get, get it. back. Yeah. It's, yeah. It, it's too, they almost don't want to be in the team rather than going, I'm going to embrace this, come on, let's have it. You, know, you know that? Yeah, You're yeah. talking about managers right, giving you tough love. I go back to Sharpie. I remember he, he got interviewed recently. He was on, you know, when he was scoring goals, Sharpie was into mm. all the dance and stuff. Yeah. Yeah. And, he, and he was, and he really enjoyed his football yeah. and off the field as well. And he said towards him when the manager, he always says when Ferguson was having a go at him, he went, and he said, I'd miss it. He went, I just stopped listening at the end. You know about that tough love or a manager, mm. and he went, I just stopped listening. Yeah, it goes listen blank. Anymore, yeah. Yeah, so. mm -hmm. it's funny. Like, that, yeah, but you said I, I, that was with George Graham. In the end, I just, you know, he's just like talk. He's just talking at you. He's, I'm not even listening no more. He was too. I, you know something? I'm not even going to complain. You know, he was the one that put me on that um, that stage with Arsenal, and we get on very, very well. But like, um, it was it was tough to the point of, you know, you'd be driving home, and I'm like, fucking hell, man, it surely can't be like this. It should be like this. Fucking hard. I can't you know, work any harder than I am yeah, in training. Do, do, I can't do, do, do any more. Do you know why I think the boss was unbelievable for 20 odd years? Because one, he stayed out of training all week and you know, he never got involved in training. He never heard his voice actually during the week that much. He'd certainly never heard it in a sort of like a forceful way or do this or do that because it was always kiddo, mm. Carlos Queiroz, Steve McLaren, Rennie Moulinstein, all those people. So you never heard his voice during the week and then all of a sudden he changed his assistant manager every three, four years with so yeah. a different voice. I think play, managers who are coaching every day, if they're on the pitch every day, and, the, and then you're on the same voice yeah. on Saturday, it's like, whew, you know what I mean? I, I don't know if that was the same with like, but yeah. I, I, we, I, we didn't get the same voice. We literally had, didn't hear his voice that much. Sure what we, 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 for the majority of my career, you'd think of sort of Julia and Benitez, foreign coaches. They weren't managers, they were coaches. Yeah. So I'd, I'd, it'd feel strange to me if you come on the train pitch and the manager wasn't there. It'd yeah. almost he was feel there. Like he was there. Yeah. I know he's there, yeah. but if he's not, he's not like, Something almost like having a supply teacher come in, you yeah. know, and it's just like that. I'd always feel a bit weird if the, if the manager wasn't there. So listen, obviously, we, I'd be for that. Do I? Before I had it with Brian Clough, Jack Chat. I, I I played for certainly three, two or three great managers who had done literally no coaching during the week. Yeah, and I loved that. I I, I didn't want to hear the manager all the time. Mm. And then on a Saturday where you're thinking, this is yeah. what obviously come alive, come, yeah. come alive, and the business starts. So again, it goes to show whatever you've been brought up with or whatever managers you were under. Brian Clough was the same. You'd be very rarely see Brian Clough, or if training was going on, he'd be in the background. Yeah. The same at United, right? Do you think that actually happens now? Because the reason I mentioned because it was a foreign thing, I think probably most managers in those days probably well, didn't change, do too no, much James, training, surely. but even does the Klopp, British does, coaches... Does, 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 Klopp, do, does Klopp do most of the sessions during the week? Uh, listen, they've got two or three people, I'm sure, to get split up, yeah. but I don't think Jürgen Klopp sort of sat in the office. And no, no, he'd be down on the pitch, I'm sure, but is yeah, he... Yeah, oh, no, I, th I think he would be involved. Like but fair. I think the ownership... I think ownership... I think ownerships want to see... Somebody out there, mm. co I think it's more yeah. a lot of the owners. If, if, if you're involved at a club, no one does a manager with that style and obviously not with that power where these managers mm. have won trophies and he's just coming in and doing one or two sessions. I bet they're going, no, we want more than that from our. Mm. A lot of it's the job titles now for a lot of managers you, now is head coach. It's yeah, not the you know manager. Saying, so yeah. You better do some you, coaching. See, so you look at, at Pep and even the, again coming off the pitch the, the other day, he's, he's still. I can't see him not being on there every yeah. day. Oh, no, I, can't, no, I, I literally coach. can't. You know, I look at him at how he is, and he looks quite intense, and it, 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 gives, it makes me nervous no, if, I had to, if I had to work under him. He makes me nervous. Do you, do you know the best things that I, I, I obviously I don't see what Klopp does any day of the week, but one of the best things that I think he does, and I've just remembered it, is standing in the warm up, and looking at the other he stands team. there, six <laughs> foot yeah. three, yeah. and he literally stares Spirit at the opposition comes. at the closest point to them where the team are warming up, and he may, he's looking at them right in the eye. He does it. Unbelievable. Why is he yeah. doing that? He does it, I think it's intimidation. He, he must have been it's, asked. It's intimidation. Asked? No, why does he? Does he say? I think he, he has it? been. I think, yeah, he will have been. It's asked. intimidation. I think he, he literally he stands there like menacing. I think 
I remember an interview he, he got asked about it and he sort of said it wasn't for that. He just wanted to see what they were doing or whatever. But he definitely, listen, I, it's I don't believe that. <laughs> but he definitely, he said something about playing Dortmund in the, in his first season at Liverpool, he played Dortmund in Europa League. And he said, if I've got it right, I'm sure he said something about like, that was definitely to sort of let them, yeah. let them know I'm, I'm the Liverpool manager, I'm not Dortmund anymore. And, and like, I'm, you know, because to them, he's, he's a god, isn't yeah, he? Yeah. Klopp, he's just left. And he definitely said there was something in that. Uh, I mean, what I have seen, other managers, but they've got a good relationship with him, go and speak to him. I've seen David Moyes do it a lot, and I think that's actually quite a clever thing to yeah, do. Yeah. You're actually, go on, I'm joining him, yeah. and we're having a little chat, yeah, so he's so not you... actually looking at the... <laughs> <laughs> I've seen, I've seen, I don't know if he gets on well with Moyes, but I've seen Moyes do it a couple of times, and I think, I have looked at it and thought, I think that's what I'd do if I was a manager, I'd go and speak to him, to make sure he's not almost like he's the players don't feel it. like they're... You know, he's got his eyes I, I, on them. I, I thought the boss, I mean, obviously you were captain, so you'll know this, that he basically, you couldn't go out, could you, until he was at the front of the actual dressing room at the door. And literally he would be, he'd wait for every player to go yeah. past. And he'd be looking down the corridor Ooh. at the referee's room and the away dressing room. Sir Alex. Sir Alex. He'd be literally staring, he'd, he'd, he'd be stood waiting at the door. You'd be Roy Keane, mm. waiting to come out and literally be staring down the corridor at the referee's room and the away dressing room and he'd, every single player would walk past him and he'd shake the hand and look, that it, it was every week. I didn't realise it happened actually that much until I became captain and Roy left, obviously. So was that his, that was, his uh, intimidation? Was absolutely, I realised when I was captain, because like, say some of the players aren't there at the back and say, wait, 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 you, you're looking, you're seeing what he's doing. And I thought, he's fucking actually eyeballing. Mm. The referees. I remember doing an Anfield the first time I yeah. played against Man United at Anfield, and Anfield's tunnel's really small yes. and it did feel like there was a huge yes. presence there. All mind games, isn't it? Mm. Yeah. I always remember one, that was John Gregory. I always remember this and he did the same at Villa. I don't know what you're laughing at. But we Villa were top of... Remember Villa started the yeah, season yeah. just top of yeah, the league? Flying. And we hadn't started that well and we, we conceded goals. And I always remember being in the tunnel and shouting really loud, saying, clean sheet, you win the game, clean sheet, you win the game. And it was, it was in your, you're yeah. going out thinking, but he, he had that sort of like yeah. cockney, wasn't he? Probably yeah. a bit flash or whatever. <laughs> but I just thought, <laughs> he was, he's it all flashy. <laughs> <laughs> but it always, it always sticks to me, man, I was only a young kid going out thinking, oh, hell, yeah, he's probably right. Bob's the score. <laughs> we won 4-2. <laughs> <laughs> I knew there was a good end in here, yeah, yeah. They beat us 5-0. Right, well, that's it. Unless there's anything else we want to get off our chests. Um. <laughs> I always feel it's sad at the end of an episode. It's nice, isn't it? After, once it starts and then you, when you get in. Yeah, but you're on about defeat in mm. Europe and disappointment. Just, you know, has it brought you down a little bit? Yeah. No, 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 not me. You know what it does? When we, when we, I, I, always, I always, it always makes me feel, I, I wish I was back in, the, I want to be back in the dressing room. I wouldn't want to be back in there in a, a, a coaching and as a player. Why do you come and be a Carl's assistant at Salford? <laughs> He's done that. <laughs> I've done that at MK, MK Dons. Dons. I remember with Carl once, I've never seen um, a manager when I was there, you know, you know what? The year what I done at MK does made me say, oh, I can't be a manager. Can't be a manager. You when you look at the year. play, you, you were there yeah, a whole year. Yeah, yeah, there a whole year, and I thought, nah, it's 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 not for me. <laughs> and I remember one time, I can't remember, it might have been Preston, and like it's like right, we're walking like this coming off because it's half time, and you know, it's like normal, this like normal talking. And we're walking. I say, okay, and then he went in the dressing room, and his fucking head exploded. <laughs> it went red like a cherry, and he. He blasted into these players to the point, and then he told them to fucking get back out. You know what I mean? And that, when they came out, and he went back to me like normal, like, yeah, yeah so, you know, like, to look to me like, so, yeah, so, right. You know, and I went, Carl, you can't fucking do that, bro. You're gonna, you're gonna have a heart attack, man, if you're gonna carry on going from zero to a hundred, and then going back to normal. That cannot be good for your body, my friend. And I had to say that to him because as good as he is as a coach, when he gets angry, it's scary. I said, is, is this what it does? Is this what it does to you? Because if I get into a place where I'm a manager and I get to my angry place, I don't know what's He's obviously happen. not listening. He got sent off about two weeks <laughs> after about a He's minute. calmed down a lot. He's calmed down a lot. But like, he's, he's, he's very good. But like I say, I have no qualms. You know, people say, yeah, well, you're always on there talking about management and this and that. <laughs> I said, it's not for me. I will not be able to deal in that place. I wouldn't be able to work in that environment. I cannot do it. But as a player, I'd love to be back in the dressing room. Can, can we have our weekly update on you, Roy? Any conversations in the last couple of weeks about getting back into it? Or yeah, what's no, going nothing, on? Nothing? All quiet? I, I, I think I'm, I'm, I'm losing no, I think sleep it's thinking, thinking of, but I don't think it. Uh, I'll be here for a while, I think. <laughs>
Something happened? What's happened? So come on, right? Something's I can tell your eyes. <laughs> I know your eyes. I can tell. Oh, there yeah. is something because I, you could tell, I, when you start smiling and doing that face. Someone's, face. someone's trying to set the piss out of you on there. I can, well, people do that all the time, Gary. How did it end? All the time, yeah. <laughs> no. No, I don't know. Well, I, just, well, we're talking about going back into management. And yeah, I think the longer you, you're out of it and the more you think. The last few chats we've had about going back to it, even before Frank came in, you do ask yourself, and I'm, I'm, I'm swaying out towards. The not going back into it. Yeah, I just think it's not it's not worth the hassle and uh, people constantly uh, disrespect you or whatever. Sometimes it's offers. I can't see where the time joy wasters. is. Where's the joy in the, in the management? You're looking at Pep, who's ultra successful. I remember watching Wenger when he was successful. You're looking at Klopp having to come out now. You know, saying he's exhausted. Where's the? When did they actually get joy in what, and what happens? Doing? Whatever about Pep's level, Pep and Klopp and all these boys. But when you go down a certain level and you, you, you have any sort of chats or discussions about going back into work, I'm not joking you. I tell you do, do, do people think you're like, everyone thinks you're so desperate and you sign anything. Mm -hmm. And I know the managers out there doing that. Absolutely. That's why they can do that. They're undercutting people. Yeah, yeah. I've just come up with a TV concept. The four of us are going to go in and manage a club for the last three weeks of a season. <laughs> right? It, any clubs in the 92 Premier, uh, Premier League and EFL want three weeks. A management weeks, team to go long. in. Three weeks. Just, you can... Who's what role? Who's the manager? Who's yeah, yeah, that? let's get that What's right. What's my role? <laughs> <laughs> These <No>. roles. <laughs> <laughs> you, you, can be, you can be manager. Cheers, Gary. You can, you can be assistant manager because you've done that before. Yeah. We'll be the, be we'll be the analysts oh. that will do opposition and <laughs> you know, the Monday night football. So, so we'll prepare them for the like sort of the, the, the post-match, the pre-match. Mm -hmm. We'll do that. So we need to be all the way if they get the glory. <laughs> 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 right? No, we're like three weeks, end of a season. I think we should offer our services up to a club to have a little bit of a go. Because I, I think that just to have that little three weeks of a taste of it would be nice, actually. Just to see what it's like. Yeah. Just to go in the dressing room. I don't want to do it full time. I've no interest in doing it. Would that, are we up for it? I want to do it. I'd want to, no, it have to be Sunday morning. We have to get no. To oh. Yeah, I'd love I to do that. Sunday. I went to watch some Sunday morning game the other day. It was unbelievable. I Forest Green, no, I can't do that, just in case we get, we get them too many points. <laughs> <laughs> Let's go. Let's get Forest Green. Forest Green, you know, they'll, they'll take us. That'd be Lee one. We're going there and give them some love. They obviously yeah. need a hug, them look. Chairman, out there. <laughs> what an offer. Mm. Let's do it, Roy. Four of us. Do you get paid? Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, I forgot about that. Brilliant. Another week. Right. Well done. Good. Well done. Gary, well love you. Well Jamie. Done. Well done. Right, well done. I like this jacket on you. Thank you. Nice. Nice, very nice. Very, very nice. Jellies are nice. Can you get a picture? Of course you can, bro. Of course you can. Can I get my lemons in? You're a lemon. <laughs> 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 <laughs>